So this is this guy's here is my fire kit. Um, this is something you guys want to make for yourself. Out. So okay, so you want to have like a few different ways to light it, and uh, flint steel have some sort of waterproof container of matches is usually really good. Uh, light anywhere makes it really useful, and some sort of lighter. I just happen to have this one. Um, the, like, if you use a cotton ball, one of these guys, which you can fit a lot in, like, a container like this, you can get it, like, Dollarama. Really, yeah. And then you can just stuff it. I think I fit, like, 30 in here, something like that. Um, if you put some, some Vaseline on it and you actually light it, it'll stay burnt for about two to three minutes. So that'll, it's, it makes it really easy to start the fire up. You can store them in a bag with the Vaseline already on them if you don't want to carry two separate things. I know yeah. it works. Yeah, yeah. Um, what I'm going to suggest to you is you need to think in terms of nesting survival kits. All right? So if you go online and you look up survival kits, the smallest ones you're going to find are like this, right? That can go into a small pouch like this, or sometimes you'll see them that can go into like a little, one of those little Altoids tins, that cost, cost candy tins. And that would be the first one that you put together, right? Then you would take that tin, which would have most important things in it for lighting a fire and, and uh, maybe some kind of a blade or something like that. And you would take that and you would put it into something this size, right? Which has got more stuff in it, right? Then, eventually, you're going to need something called a go bag, which would be a day pack that you could at any time just pick up and carry away with you, and you should be fine in the wilderness with whatever is in that go bag. So you take this, and you put it in the go bag with all the other things that you would add as well. Right? So think in terms of nesting survival kits. The smallest one, very handy, because the smaller it is, the more likely you're going to be to take it with you. Okay? Now I have, uh, uh, Colin showed you his, I, mine's a little bit bigger because I, I uh, put some things together. And I'll show you the other things in this later on. But my, that's my fire kit. And you want to put it in some kind of a uh, waterproof container. And I just happen to have this nice round uh, plastic screw-on uh, container. Actually, it's not screw-on. I put um, some tape around it because it just fit perfectly so it doesn't take up hardly any space at all inside my kit. And then I would put some various things in it. I tried, so I put some of this in because if you're going to make a bow drill fire, you want, want to have some cordage. I started by wrapping it around the other side and it was such a nuisance that I just took it off and I thought, okay, I'll just put it inside, it's so much easier. But you look at the fancy ones there and they've got that. And I've got some other stuff, I'm going to take them out and put them aside if it doesn't have to do with, um, with uh, uh, fire. I just put some things in here to fill it up. So this is a little can opener. Um, this is some fishing hooks. All right. This is some matches. Okay. And this is the striker like the one that you had there. Uh, some uh, safety pins. A lighter. Uh, guy who taught uh, uh, survival for uh, the Canadian military, he said like the, the most important thing to have in your survival kit is a big lighter. And he says if it's wet it won't light, but if it gets wet and you dry it out it lights fine. And so as a, as a survival lighter it's, it's, uh, it's very useful. So the lighter is there. I've got, uh, these are water purification tablets, some cordage and some fire starter and you basically got and what I didn't have in here that I wanted to have in here was uh, was some of these cotton balls you can use this for fire starter as well now this thing here 
it works kind of interestingly. This is what uh, Colin had that he seems to have lost part of it. Um, and you can see that it has um, a, a striker, a dark striker here, and it has a lighter metal here. Okay? And the way that it works is, um, and it's just a, actually what they put on this is a little hacksaw blade, like a broken hacksaw blade, because that re works really well. The lighter metal is magnesium, and if you have a situation where the uh, where it's hard hard to get your tinder going, what you do is you scrape a little bit of magnesium on it. And make sure it's lit on the vessel. Now, if you have if you have so I've got magnesium here, and it it will work so that. You guys have seen magnesium burn, right? I mean, magnesium burns so hot and so bright that you're not supposed to look at it when it's burning because it'll, it'll actually damage your retina. Um, so then you can use this. Oh, let's try this. That was the magnesium, right? Are you recording? Okay. Thank God. Suck it in so it burns for quite a bit of time. And as I said, if you got a little plastic bag and you soak some of these balls in a Vaseline to start with, then um, they're more permeated with it, like there's more of it there. Long lasting. Yeah, it'd be long lasting. So. You could also put more cotton balls to help let it burn, but if you are <laughs> in like a survival situation, you're going to want to let it like have start as many fires as possible with what you have. So you're probably going to want one more. These work quite well, and they are actually, uh, they'll, um, they won't strike anywhere. It looks like they will, but they don't actually. And uh, you can pick them up uh, at camping stores, and it's always good to have a few of these. Just one of these, it's kind of like sawdust pressed together and, and soaked in wax, and it would last for a very long time as well. So putting one of these in your fire would get it going long enough to get even get uh, wet tinder and kindling um, dry and get your fire started and moving. Right. Yeah, I just keep on keeping on.